here. Everyone thinks it's cute to have dogs in the shop until they start crawling all over you. It's cute for me up here. <laughs> What's up, Brito? Shade Tree Surgeon here. And yes, there's a Trans Am in this garage, which is not mine. And it's not the guy whose Trans Am it is either. I'll give you three guesses before we reveal who's underneath that car. Many things over the years will change. People come and go, things come and go. Obviously, I'm not in my garage anymore. Yeah, and we're never going back to that garage. More on that later. But one thing remains eternal, and that's the California quiet. You guys almost got my car ready or what, man? Yeah, man, almost, dude. <laughs> Adam, Scott, they're good dudes, man. I like them a lot, but they're lazy. They freaking take so many breaks. I did most of this work over here. <laughs> I know, and if you watch Adam's video, you're gonna see him saying he did this and he did that, but you know, I did most of it. I don't need to take credit, but I am. <laughs> Finish this up because I'm charging rent on this garage that's not mine. Expensive. <laughs> More expensive by the minute. Well, that was a bit of an odd opening to a video where a lot of people probably have questions. There are answers coming to all those questions, I promise you. Well, almost all of them anyway. It's time to come clean. Just what the heck is happening in my life right now? I haven't really wanted to talk about it because I haven't been completely sure myself where I was gonna land. You definitely could have guessed from last week's video that I don't live in my house anymore. Me and Shaylisi, we had to move out. It was definitely a bittersweet moment before Shaylisi moved into that house. She was actually homeless and I was coming out of being almost homeless myself. I say almost homeless because I've got a lot of really good friends. So when you've got amazing friends like I do and I count myself very fortunate to have them, you're never really homeless. A quick break, had to go get my little uh, 70s porn star bush over here because it's kind of windy outside. Where was I? Yes, in the past six years, my tumultuous living situation. Yes, in the past six years, I've lived everywhere from the back of my truck, upstairs at the Dirty Shame, the attic of my one of my best friends, Nomad Josh 13, the attic of his house. I lived in Dave Vincent from Morbid Angel's house for quite some time as well. While it sounds very cool to say I lived in a rock star's house, I promise you it was not as cool as it sounds and it had not been lived in for what looked like over a decade. And anyway, regardless, it's better than not having a house at all, right? It was while I was basically squatting at Dave Vincent's house among the sarcophaguses and various morbid goth things all over. That was a really creepy house to live in, I promise you. It was cool, but very creepy. During that time, Shaylisi moved back to Tampa. She started making YouTube videos. That was the time that we got the first Brapstar garage. It was a really just a, a time of growth, a time of building. And then me and Shaylisi got the house that we lived in for a while. We were roommates. We were making videos together every day. We lived there for two, almost three years. That's where we built the live streaming room where we spent hundreds and hundreds of hours with you guys, both on Twitch and here on YouTube. It was a first time in a long time where I really felt like I had a home where I was living somewhere and obviously we don't live there anymore but more on that in a second. Back to Brapstar Garage. I even forgot my good friends at the Ride Factory because before I went and was working on stuff at Brapstar Garage, the Ride Factory, my man Brian over there and Brian and 1-800-ASH-SHELBY, they let me work, work on my stuff at the Ride Factory and film videos there even though it's a working shop. Amazing people. And of course when I got Brapstar Garage it was a huge win. It was absolutely amazing. It never really turned into what I wanted it to turn into. We had huge problems with the landlord. A lot of scummy stuff happened. We ended up getting evicted and had to move all of our stuff out in less than 24 hours. That's a whole other thing. And obviously the title of this video is not gonna be, I got evicted. <laughs> but I did title a different video that, that and it wasn't clickbait, it was true. Again, I'll count myself incredibly fortunate though because even though I was evicted from our shop and we had to move stuff into storage units and things just kind of got thrown to the wind in every which way and it was super stressful. I had a garage at the house. Me and Shay Lisi lived at this house and I had a garage there. So many people don't have a garage at their house. I, was, I felt incredibly lucky, incredibly fortunate, even though we were evicted, to still have a place to work on my bikes, store my bikes, and film my videos and do my thing. It, 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 really, it could have been way worse, I promise you. And a lot of people are working on their stuff in the grass, in their yard, out front of their apartment complexes, underneath the sun or in the rain. So I'm a pretty lucky guy. This is why I always say I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. I'm never doing that bad, I promise you. Fast forward to now, and once again, we are <laughs> we are thrown to the wind, and we had a place that we thought we were going to move into, but that is on hold, on hiatus, and hopefully it'll still work out. I can't really go into details on it right now because it's still kind of ongoing, but we ended the lease at our house where we were renting because we were getting ready to pack up all our stuff and move in there, and turns out we couldn't move in there. Like I said, can't talk about it right now because there's a lot of stuff ongoing right there, but we'll get into it, and that's because we're still hoping to move into that place eventually, but 
But for right now, we found ourselves at the end of our lease, having to leave our house and having nowhere to go. Yeah, it's stressful to throw all of your stuff in the space of two or three days into the back of a U-Haul and the back of trucks and just kind of disperse it everywhere. Everything's in like five different locations right now. I don't know where anything is. So what now? Over the years of YouTubing, which it's been 12, God, coming on 12 years now, I've worked on stuff everywhere from my backyard to my front porch, to the ride factory, to the first single car garage I ever had, to Brapstar Garage, my first shop that didn't work out. Back Back to a home garage and it's, it's been pretty wild i'm not gonna lie to you not as wild as some people's lives i always try to check myself and say it's not as crazy as a lot of people's lives but sometimes it feels pretty wild well i'm fortunate enough to still have very very good friends and even though everything's thrown to the wind and in 10 different places right now i still have a place to lay down at night and i even still have a place to work on my motorcycles welcome to the dungeon Not a very pretty sight right now, but we're working on it. Yeah, it's uh, looking a little bit like a Dexter kill room if he was super into motorcycles, but it's got potential, okay? It's got potential. This is why I always say I'm okay. I'm doing fine. The fact that my motorcycles are here, dubious covering, but covering nonetheless. The fact that they're here on a concrete pad and covered up and it's a place I can access and a place that I can use. This puts me head and shoulders above almost everybody out there, including a lot of you guys who are watching my videos. I know that most people out there watching my videos, you don't have a garage, working on stuff in your carport, if you're lucky, the parking lot of your apartment complex. Like, trust me, I realize exactly how lucky I am. And even though things are pretty crazy and pretty hectic right now, I'm not gonna sit here and wallow in it. I'm not gonna feel sorry for myself. I'm not gonna look at you guys and go, feel sorry for me, poor me. Cause you shouldn't feel sorry for me. This is freaking amazing. And while it's stressful right now, with a couple days of work and <laughs> a little bit of reckless optimism, everything's gonna be just fine. Now that's not saying I don't have my work cut out for me. Cause I definitely do. Disarray, destruction, discordia, everything in here is all kind of all over the place. Hey, what's this motorcycle? More on that later. My toolbox and my tools are a combination of just kind of thrown in here every which way and in a bunch of these yellow totes. Also thrown every single which way. Blown to the wind, baby. Hey, what's that? Whoa! That's new too. More on that in a second too. That's gonna answer some questions over there as well. Now on top of moving everything I had in three days, figuring out where to put all these motorcycles, throwing everything into a box, uh, I also had to help out my good friend Adam Sandoval, something I was very happy to do. All jokes aside, veil completely lifted back, even though I always try to be really honest on this channel. I make a lot of jokes that sometimes I find funny and maybe I think make me laugh that maybe not everybody else gets. After all, this YouTube channel is basically for my amusement. I make videos for me. So sometimes people don't get the right idea of how I actually feel about things. And that is understandable. One of those things might be Adam Sandoval. Uh, a lot of people don't know exactly what kind of relationship I have with Adam. They've seen me say things about him. They engage in hill climbs with him and talk all sorts of mess and call him a cheat and a liar and every name under the book. I consider Adam Sandoval to be a very, very good, very close, very personal friend of mine. The dude is true blue through and through. So when it came time that that Adam needed a favor from me. He's done me a lot of favors. So I was more than happy, eager, and willing to help him out in any way I can. He's on a huge trip on that 78 Trans Am. He was having horrible front suspension problems. And just so happens that I, <laughs> I just landed in a place where we could fit a car inside. Also just so happens that Joe the Mountain Jedi, he's put a lot of old F bodies on the dirt track back in the day in Arkansas. So with our powers combined and all my tools thrown everywhere, which way we were able to help get Adam back on the road and also with the help of my very good friend at Gator Ford, the fat and furious one himself, Mike. Mike really saved the day at the end of it, man. He really came through and pulled a lot of strings and made some stuff happen for us. If you're gonna buy a truck, buy it from Gator Ford. If I have to deal with trucks, well, I'd rather buy a truck from a guy who loves motorcycles. So Mike, the fat and furious one, I'll have his Instagram down below. Make sure you're following Adam Sandoval and you can see everything from his perspective because I filmed almost none of it. We were really just kind of scrambling around trying to get this car ready because we were on an insane time frame. Anyway, back to making jokes and talking crap and calling him a cheat and a liar, okay? But you know, if anybody ever wonders what I actually think about Adam Sandoval, refer back to this video. He's a good dude and there's not much I wouldn't do for him. And shout out to the chief too. Never doubt the chief. The chief is always right.
bike that I get asked questions about infrequently, but frequently enough that I'm going to answer it because it's a bike I really love is the V65 Magna. If you guys remember, this is a bike I picked up for $1,500. It was running on two cylinders. It needed a bunch of work. Now I've been through the brakes. It still needs suspension work. The real issue with this motorcycle isn't the motor or the carburetors actually. The motor runs perfectly and the carburetors are great except for one thing. Even though it runs perfectly, which is very frustrating, the carburetors have a crossover tube that has O-rings on it, and those O-rings have dried up. So while the bike is idling, not while it's under load, but while it's idling, it will leak a pretty substantial amount of fuel. Also, unfortunately, Japanese engineers aren't the amazing god kings sent from on high to make the perfect motorcycles either. In fact, they do some pretty silly stuff. This motorcycle's carburetor situation was definitely one of them. In order to replace those two little one o-rings on that crossover tube i actually have to pull the entire carburetor assembly which is very very difficult on these motorcycles and i just haven't gotten around to it yet which is a shame because otherwise this motorcycle runs perfectly but we're getting to that soon because i love this bike I wanna ride it. It's a freaking amazing bike. I didn't pay much for it. And it's just one of those bikes where it was on a poster on my wall for a really long time. And I just wanna give it the love it deserves. And luckily as well, lucky, 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 I'm one of the luckiest guys ever. Joe the Mountain Jedi is incredibly familiar with V65 Magnas. And he has the perfect fix for their camshaft problem. But he's gonna be able to make this bike run as long as it should have from the factory. Not trying to harp on Japanese engineers here. You know, they've done a lot of amazing stuff, but I will go ahead and say that, you know, sometimes it just takes, <laughs> it takes a redneck from the Ozarks, from Arkansas to fix their mistakes, okay? And speaking of V65s, yes. Another bike that happened to be on my wall when I was a little kid, the V65 Sabre. This is what I traded the CB750 for. I know I was supposed to say that in the last video, between the hecticness of moving and all the wild stuff that was happening, I, I genuinely just forgot to put it in there. I had that CB750 chopper, the one with the girder front end. A lot of guys would say I got a bad deal because they prefer choppers. I like bike. I like all motorcycles. I like choppers, I like sport bikes, I like cruisers, and I really like the V65. The guy I got this from had just upgraded to a VMAX, arguable whether that's an upgrade or not, but technically the VMAX does make more horsepower and he was looking to unload this thing. It actually runs fine if you're taking him at his word and I met him and hung out with him for a while and I do. I just got to put the exhaust on it. The carburetors are completely rebuilt. The bike looks kind of rough right now because the body panels are off of it. I have all the body panels. I have the unobtainium front fairing for this. I consider that to be a damn good deal. Considering I paid a little over a thousand dollars for that CB750 chopper, you know, he probably would have had a hard time selling this bike in the state that it was in, but he was more than happy to trade and I'm more than happy to have this motorcycle. The V65 Magna is a rare enough motorcycle, but the V65 Sabre is even rarer, man. And yeah, it's kind of just the same bike, but it's not. It's got its own gas tank. It's got the monoshock in the rear. There's just a lot of things that are different about this motorcycle and being able to have both of them, being able to have the V65 Magna and the V65 Sabre, both of them in my possession for under $2,500. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about that. More on this later. I am going to throw it back together because I do want to ride it and technically it doesn't need anything but the exhaust to be put on it. So we're not getting that today. We still got a lot of work to do out here and I still got a few more questions to answer. A few more, a ton more. definitely still get a lot of questions about this guy. And trust me, out of everything I'm working on right now, I think that this guy is my favorite guy. My 79 shovel head that I rode cross country that my friend Circus Bear Moto in Oregon helped me get, got into a motorcycle accident after we parted ways. That still haunts me, by the way, but this motorcycle and this trip that I did with David from Forgotten Angels was probably, the, I would say, the best trip that I've ever done in my life. It was the most insane, the craziest, the most fun, the most rewarding, the most soul crushing, and the most triumphant I've ever done in my entire entire life. Every once in a while I'll get an email of someone going like, hey, what'd you do with that old shovel? Why don't you let me buy that off you? And 
Dude, not a freaking chance. Like no offense or anything, but not a chance. What I went through with this motorcycle, I can't even put into words. And I got a lot of words, baby. I've had plans for this motorcycle for a while. I know exactly what I want to do to it. It's going to come back in a huge way, bigger, better, and badder than ever. And it's probably out of everything besides the Bosazoko bike, which we'll get to in a second. Yes, we're still doing that. Besides anything, this is probably the one that I'm more excited about than anything because the bond that you form when you went through what this motorcycle put me through that's something else man and i'm excited to bring it back and bring it back way badder than it was before this is definitely like the bad boy shovel the pentultimate 1970s 80s tough guy leather fringe jacket shovel head and we're bringing it back exactly in that same vein with a huge nod towards the original owner and what he had in mind for it when he first redid it in the 90s there's a lot of wildness happening in my life right now but there always is i don't think i could do it any other way it wasn't wild and unknown and crazy and i didn't know what was going to happen next i'd probably be so bored i just simply pass away i hate that this video is basically just like an update video of me going over a few things that you guys had questions about and not even all of them because there's other stuff too i just don't have access to it right now because these are the only things i have with me like i said the bosuzoko bike we're still building that i've been collecting parts for it especially lately i got some really cool stuff for it these rims were a huge win they were off a honda vtr 250 and a lot of bosuzoko guys a lot of guys run these rims they have what's called an in board disc it's just i don't know why i think they look really cool but i also think both Zoko bikes look really cool i know a lot of guys in japan run those rims I only imported the vtr 250 here for a couple years with those inboard oh shit as they fall over with those inboard disc rims so they're not expensive they're cheap because nobody really wants them but they are hard to find so i found myself very fortunate i found a set for a hundred dollars for both the front and rear rim it was a huge score also scored this baby right here also for a hundred dollars this is a six cylinder magneto a fairbanks morse that originally was probably on your grandpa's tractor not this one though because this is new old stock this magneto has literally never been run some of you guys might remember that the donor bike for this is a gt 750 suzuki water buffalo and that's a three cylinder two stroke why do we have a six cylinder magneto for that well two strokes for every one stroke that a four stroke would have so we have to have a six cylinder magneto at fna customs because he's built a three cylinder two stroke stroke motorcycle with a six cylinder magneto firing it before which is the only reason i'm able to even attempt doing something like that like i said i'm a lucky guy and i got really good friends there's various other parts to the bosuzoko build scattered around here everything from fenders to the peace sign uh side mirrors and stuff like that can't exactly find them right now i'm filming this the day it's supposed to come out today is wednesday and we've just been moving all week and the only thing i was able to film was like two minutes of us working on adam's trans am so we're under the gun but i didn't want to leave you guys hanging again Again. So I wanted, I wanted to give you an update. I wanted you to let you know that everything's fine. We have a place to put our heads down. We have a place to work on our motorcycles and film videos. Like we're fine. I read through the comments. A lot of people were worried about us. They were just going like, gosh, what's happening? This sucks. And I read through all those comments. I go like, look, I cannot, I can't wait to sit here and wait till I'm ready to make a video and ready to tell you guys. I got to get one out ASAP and let you guys know that, hey, everything's cool. I'm more than fine. I'm lucky. I'm doing well. There's nothing to worry about. Brap Star is fine. Order. We got all our the orders. That's what I'm going to do after this. I gotta go unpack all the stuff to send out y'all's brap star orders in so me and Shaylee so can get back to that. Sorry if everything's a couple days late. There's extenuating circumstances, but we have a place to do everything. We have a place to sleep and cook dinner. And no, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than a lot of people have. In fact, a lot better than a lot of people that we all try to help have. Forgotten Angels. A lot of these kids are homeless. They're on the streets. They would love to have a garage and a place to sleep and place to film videos and all this stuff. And they don't have any of that stuff. So I look at all these young men and women that get helped by Forgotten Angels and by Dave and Cindy and by all of y'all's generosity. And I go, man, compared to them, I might as well be the damn Sultan of Brunei. You know what I mean? I'm doing amazing compared to them. I don't ever sit down and say like, hey, I'm doing bad or I'm depressed or this sucks or poor me or anything like that. I, I'm a reckless optimist. Hey, <laughs> I always think things are pretty good. And like I always say, I think everything's going to work out in the end, but I always think everything's going to work out in the end. That's part of the whole reckless optimism thing. Thing. You know, if you always think everything's going to be fine, then you don't ever really worry that much, do you? You just go like, hey, it's going to be cool. Happy endings all around. I'll be the most surprised person in the room when I finally kick the bucket, okay? I'll never see that coming. And speaking of forgotten angels and campouts and cool motorcycles, yes, you can still win the Tour Glide. Let's go hang out with that bike for a little while.
<laughs> I really like this bike. She's got like the perfect exhaust for touring too. Someone would probably definitely want it louder, but if you're gonna do what if this bike's intended purpose is and that's go far, the far gate, get it? Well, the beige malaise is pretty much just exactly the right sound for me anyway. I guess if you have a ladder exhaust, you can just stick some earbuds in and then it's everybody else's problem and not yours. Hey, I'm gonna miss this bike, but no matter how much I like it, this is gonna be one of y'all's motorcycles. We got the pricing all figured out on the raffle. As I said in the last video, we're going to lower it. So it's gonna be 10 bucks a ticket. And that's really just because I wanted everyone to get a chance at it, man. And at 10 bucks a ticket, I feel like not that much less than 25, but I don't know, $15 less, man. It's, it's less than 25. So I just, I wanted everyone to have a chance to buy a ticket and support Forgotten Angels if they wanted to. We got 10 days left if you wanna get a chance to win this thing. And this 82 Tour Glide, shovel head man, it could be yours baby you could be riding this thing home good brakes and all god i'm glad it's got those now we did put a couple options on there you can get more tickets if you spend 20 bucks and 50 bucks and stuff like that but that's all up to you you're still entered to win the tour glide if you're signed up on harness and if you bought a ticket in the last week of the last raffle you're still signed up so you know you might already have a ticket for this raffle but if you don't there's 10 days left if you want the beige malaise we still got a couple things to do to it joe the mountain jet is gonna take it for a couple weeks and ride it around to make sure everything on it is tip top it'll be as good as you can get it and you can feel pretty confident about putting this thing on the road also hate to say it but the time has come the march camp out is coming up why do i hate to say that i hate to say it because we're gonna have to charge this year it's not something i like announcing in fact i was i'm very anxious to announce that we're charging for the camp out we're not charging for profit i promise you for example the last camp out cost david from forgotten angels not forgotten angels but it cost David personally over $20,000. It cost me personally over $4,000, me and Shay Lisi and Brapstar, but you know, my few thousand bucks ain't crap to how much David himself put into that camp out because we're not using the charity dollars to, to put it to the camp out. We're not doing that. David uses his personal money and uh, you know, we're gonna charge for the camp out. I, I, uh, that is what it is. And like I said, I, I hate to announce it. I hate saying that it doesn't make me feel good. And I'm just worried that there's gonna be backlash and people are going to be like, I hate you now because it's always been a free event, but this will be our seventh camp out and we've never charged for a single one. But you know, with a combined cost of almost $30,000 for the last one, we just, we can't cover the bill anymore, man. It just is impossible for us to do it. So the March camp out is going to be the very first one we're charging for. It's going to be a hundred bucks for the whole weekend. That hundred dollars will get you three meals a day, all three nights of camping, the entertainment, all the beer you can drink, soda, water, basically everything. It's a hundred bucks for four days. You can look at it as 25 bucks a day and it gets you every single thing you need. You ain't got to bring nothing. It's still not going to be a for-profit event because trust me, it'll end up costing us more than whatever we bring in on ticket sales and that's okay. Now, for some reason it happens to make more, well, then we'll just donate that money to Forgotten Angels. Like we're not, still not a for-profit event. We just, we literally just can't afford to do it. Like I said, at $26,000, dollars $27,000 for the camp out last year, I, I just, I, my pockets aren't that deep, man. I can't do it. And David covered the big expenses last year because there's no way I could have done it. There's no way I could have made that happen. So I'm so thankful that he was there to do it. We just can't afford to do it anymore. The camp out's gotten too big. What we are still going to do is if you buy $100 worth of tickets, you get $100 worth of tickets for the tour glide here. Well, that'll get you in free to the camp out. Yeah, bring me no pleasure to say that we've got to charge for the camp out it is a, a huge bummer i'm not looking for just i don't know i know there's going to be backlash i know i'm going to get freaking hate comments down there saying we're trying to rob people and blah 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 and i don't know i guess it's like you look at how much money we've raised for charity and you go hey just use that well that's not what it's for you don't raise money for charity to have the camp out so we can all eat and drink for free and <laughs> get drunk in a field all weekend and hang out with each other that's not why we raise money for charity you raise money for charity to give it to charity that money doesn't get used for the camp out and like i said even if you get a hundred dollars worth of raffle tickets for the beige malaise we're not still not taking any of that but that will get you into the camp out we'll count that as a ticket if, if you want to do that i mean it's uh 
Again, not a, it's not exciting for me to have to charge for this. Not an exciting day for me, but it is absolutely necessary. It's either this or we just don't do the camp out anymore. I know there'll be a hundred solutions down below. People will be like, well, get people to bring beer and get people to do that and, and that, but you can't. I can't sit here and rely on someone else to do all this stuff uh, because then when it doesn't happen, there's 400 people in a field looking at me going like, well, why, what are we supposed to do now? It's like, we have to have that stuff handled before people show up. I've always wanted to keep it free as long as we could and we've reached that point i think the actual head count for this past one was i think it was over 500 people so keeping 500 people fed three times a day water and and keeping them drunk for four days it's not cheap man it's not cheap as i said i don't even think the 100 bucks will probably cover the entire freaking thing but that's all right we're not looking to cover the entire thing we're not looking to sit here and go like oh we're gonna make a million dollars off of this we're just trying not to <laughs> david's trying not to shell out 22 grand of his own personal money i've been talking about it in discord and everyone there is super supportive of it but you know i always just worry what the everyone else is gonna think so on top of everything else that's been going on i've just been had this gigantic anxiety weighing down on me worrying about telling people that we're gonna have to charge for the camp out but here we go here it is uh, it is what it is y'all uh, there's nothing I can do about it because like I said it's either this or we don't we no longer do it so that those are the two options because I can't afford to pay for it I just you know I can't David can't afford to pay for it either it's not like I don't I don't want to pay for it I literally I don't, I, it, I don't have twenty thousand dollars to pay for a four-day weekend for 500 people. I just don't have it, man. <laughs> yeah, I wish if I did, if I was a millionaire, then it'd be a different story. Then twice a year, me and 500 of my friends would be partying all weekend long. But unfortunately, I ain't got that kind of scratch, baby. Let's talk again if I ever do. All right, let's go and take the old Reagan missile back and park it. Like I said, I still got a couple things to do to it before I take a little road trip on it. And then we pull the winner. Like I said, 10 days left, baby. I get that some people wouldn't want it. Some people don't want a 1982 Shovelhead Tour Glide, but I don't know. I, I don't know a lot of those people. Most of the people I know would love to have this bike. And of course, they also love to support Forgotten Angels and help these kids who've aged out of the foster care system, help them get their first chance, you know, not their second chance, uh, hopefully not their last chance, but get them their very first chance. If you've been to the camp out and you've met Dave and Cindy, you know what they're doing. You know the money's going to one of the most amazing causes out there. And, and you know it's not hitting any branches on the way down, not even our camp out. Okay, we can't sit here and go like, cool, Forgotten Angels made some money so we get to pay for the Brap Star camp out. That's not how it works. Anyway, that link's down below, y'all. Make sure you check it out. Speaking of the guys on the Discord, you know, huge ups to everyone there. Through this time, you guys there have been absolutely amazing, have been incredibly helpful, incredibly understanding, and a huge, huge source of inspiration and moral support throughout this entire thing. Not only throughout this entire thing that me and Shaylee are going through right now, but also also through the entirety of all the money and all the bikes we've given away and everything we've done for charity, not only Forgotten Angels, but also Bert Salute to America and the Project One Vet at a Time and helping out homeless veterans and helping out, you know, teens, young men and women who've aged out of the foster care program. Together, I really think, you know, we're, we're bad people doing good things, okay? We're good-hearted villains and dangerous women and we might laugh a little bit too loud and we might drink a little bit too much and we definitely all ride a little bit too fast. At the end of the day, we all try to do something good. Now, whether we're doing something good to offset all the bad things we do or whether we're just doing something good because it's the right thing to do, it is what it is, I guess. Either way, we are chaotic good and we're having a good time while we're doing it. There's a lot of people in a lot of places in the world where we wouldn't be welcome and the fact that we're welcome at Forgotten Angels and because we do good things even though we do drink a little too much and laugh a little bit too loud, I think that's a pretty amazing thing, man. And like I said, the link for the old Tour Glide will be down there and I think this thing's got many, many, many more years of raising hell on the roads in it. Less than 10 days to grab a ticket for that, as always, 100% of that goes directly to Forgotten Angels to do amazing things. Together, we are changing the world, and we're bringing a Forgotten Angels to a place near you. That's what we're working on right now, and are we going to change everything in the world? Nah, we certainly aren't. Are we going to change what we can while we're here? Yeah, I think we'll shoot for that. 
That's about the best we can do, huh? We're trying to get the internet situation figured out literally right now as I speak a few hours before this video is coming out. And uh, we're trying to live stream on the Shaylisi channel after it so we can hang out and talk a little bit more and answer some more questions about everything that's going on. But I can't guarantee that'll happen. We're, we're kind of going hour to hour right now. You know, don't ask me what I'm doing next week or even tomorrow. I don't know what I'm doing an hour from now. One hour from now, I'll be editing this video. You get it. Anyway, <laughs> I do my best work when my back's against the wall, even though this video definitely wasn't my best work. It's just me kind of filling you guys in on some of the things that's been going on. I appreciate y'all sticking with me for well over a decade at this point. I made a post, a short, you know, and I said uh, last week, because I missed Wednesday, I said, hey, sorry guys, I missed this day. And I you know, normally don't like doing that. I was just letting everybody know. And yeah, as always, I didn't let it bother me that much for someone in there is going like, wow, a video about how you're not making a video. Why don't you just make a video? And it rubbed me the wrong way a little bit because you guys who are in there right now and the premiere crew and all the Discord guys and everything like that all the channel members and everybody who shows up to every single premiere you know we've been doing this since YouTube started doing premieres so it's been over six years at this point I believe and we've been doing every single premiere for twice a week and you know we're hanging out anywhere from 500 to a thousand people anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour twice a week for six years yeah you kind of get used to seeing those people and hanging out so I don't like to just leave people hanging if I'm not gonna make a video and I'm not gonna have one out I want to let people know like hey by the way there's no hangout today in the premiere chat. Half you guys who watch the premiere don't even watch the video because we're all too busy talking to each other. It's cool. Go back and watch it later. This is hangout time. Yeah, of course I'm going to make a video letting you guys know. I'm going to try not to miss another day. I don't like missing uploads from now on. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'm going to try my best. We'll be here every Wednesday and Sunday and hopefully more than that going forward because we got a lot of big things on the horizon. Lots of amazing stuff. We're kind of in a rut right now, but uh, hey, we'll be stronger for climbing out of it and we got amazing friends to help us. So I ain't that worried, baby. It'll all be all good. Till next time, y'all, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.